everyone and welcome back to the channel. We go behind the scenes to see how Cadbury chocolate is made, as well as an insight into the special techniques used in producing this delicious chocolate. Are you a chocolate lover? If you are, you'd agree that you usually don't need an excuse to eat good chocolate. Some people think Halloween or Christmas is the perfect time to have chocolate in other confectionaries. However, as I already mentioned, you don't need an excuse to have good chocolate. Speaking of good chocolates, one of the best ones is Cadbury Dairy Milk Chocolate. This chocolate bar is the best selling chocolate in the UK and the second in the world. But for a snack that popular, I bet you don't know how it's made. The story of chocolate production is one of the most unusual ones ever, because how do you explain how something so sweet can be produced from a small bitter bean? However, that's exactly how it happens, and Cadbury is one of the best to do it. The company was founded in the early 1800s by an English coffee and chocolate maker, John Cadbury. Ever since then, what started as a small coffee shop has become one of the world's largest chocolate manufacturers. It all begins with cacao plants on the large cocoa plantations of Ghana, West Africa. 70% of the world's cocoa is produced in West Africa and Cadbury has partnered with some of the largest plantations in the region. When the cocoa fruits are full and ripe, the local farmers carefully harvest them, but they make sure to do it with care because if the process is done recklessly, it could jeopardize the tree's ability to bear more fruits in the next cocoa season, and that isn't good for business. The harvesting process is completely manual, and farmers use several tools for this process, like cutlasses, shears, etc. The fruits are collected in a basket and carried to the farmhouses, where the seeds are extracted from the pods. The extraction process is a bit challenging, first because it is usually done manually and second because it can be a bit messy. To extract the seeds, the pods are cracked using a machete or a similar instrument, and the farmer uses his hands to twist the pod open. On opening the pods, there is a sweet white pulp that wraps around the cocoa seeds, and this pulp is removed and placed in a basket. In a cocoa fruit, there are between 20 and 40 seeds, and after extracting them, the white pulp is cleaned off and the seeds are sorted. They are separated into good and bad, and the good ones are set aside for the next step, which is fermentation. At this stage, the seeds are kept in large wooden containers and covered with sacks or banana leaves, creating the perfect condition for ethanol fermentation. The fermentation process takes a couple of days, and afterward, the seeds are stirred, resulting in acetic acid fermentation, the second stage of the fermentation process. Fermentation is important because it enhances the flavor and aroma of the seeds. After the seeds have fermented for days, they are allowed to dry until their moisture content has reduced to less than 8%. This is achieved by spreading the seeds on a flat surface or the floor depending on where the sun's intensity is highest and the facilities available on the farm. The drying process can take days because if it's done thoroughly, the fermentation process will continue to happen and uncontrolled fermentation is not exactly a good thing. Next, the seeds are packaged and transported to Cadbury processing factories worldwide. In the UK, this factory is located in North Wales, and in Australia, the processing occurs in Tasmania. The location varies across different countries where Cadbury factories are located. At the processing factory, the seeds are passed through a large screen that filters impurities like twigs, leaves, shells, etc. from the seeds. The seeds are then crushed to separate the shell from the nibs, which are roasted in the roasting machine set to a temperature between 120 and 140 degrees Celsius. Roasting is important because it helps sterilize the seeds by killing off any germs and parasites, and it also helps enhance the flavor of the beans. The effect of roasting on the flavor and aroma of the cocoa seeds cannot be overemphasized, and if the seeds are not properly roasted, the resulting chocolate will evidently be substandard. Judging by the exquisite taste of Cadbury chocolate, you can tell that the workers that handle this stage of the chocolate production have been properly trained. 
Next, the roasted cocoa seeds are filtered again to remove remnants of the shell and other chaff that may be present by a process called winnowing. This is done simply by blowing air over the cocoa seeds, and this is done to ensure that dirt is not ground with the seeds as they are taken to the grinder. The grinding of the cocoa seeds results in the production of a dark substance called cocoa liquor. This liquor is taken to another machine called the hydraulic press, which presses the liquor until all the cocoa butter content is extracted, and all that remains is cocoa powder. Next, the cocoa powder and cocoa butter are packaged, loaded on ships, and transported to another factory where the actual chocolate production takes place. In Australia, this factory is also located in Tasmania, and in the UK, this facility is located in Hereford. At the factory, the cocoa powder and cocoa butter are mixed together in a large food processor along with fresh, full-fat condensed milk and a ton of granulated sugar. For ease of transport, the milk and sugar plants are located close to the factory. For example, the milk used in Tasmania is concentrated and pasteurized within the city, and the sugar is obtained from a mill nearby. This mixture of cocoa butter, cocoa powder, milk, and sugar is processed and evaporated in an oven, leaving behind a dry mixture called a chocolate crumb. This crumb was invented in the early 1900s by George Cadbury, the son of John Cadbury, the patriarch of the Cadbury dynasty. The crumb is the basis of all the chocolates or chocolate-flavored foods produced by the Cadbury brand. And so, it's transported to other Cadbury factories where the chocolate production process is completed. And in Australia, this factory is in Melbourne. The Cadbury factory in Melbourne is where the magic happens. The crumb is put through a series of processes, including refining, conching, and tempering. Refining involves whipping the chocolate around and adding more ingredients until the taste is perfect. The ingredients added are milk, sugar, cocoa butter, and cocoa powder, and their quantities are altered until the right flavor is achieved. As each batch is being altered, a skilled technician takes a sample to the lab, where different kinds of physical tests are conducted. After the perfect flavor has been achieved, the next process is conching, which involves using a surface scraping mixer and agitator called a conch. The point of this machine is to distribute the ingredients evenly making the mixture as homogeneous as possible. After being spun in the conch for a hole, the chocolate mixture is tempered using an industrial tempering machine. Tempering involves repeatedly heating and cooling the chocolate mixture to give it a smooth, glassy appearance. Once the chocolate mixture has been tempered, it's pumped into a filling machine with several nozzles. Meanwhile, molding trays have been automatically placed under the filling machine, and as they pass, a specific portion of the chocolate is fed into the trays from the machine up above, and they pass through a branding machine that inscribes Cadbury on each chocolate cube. Next, the chocolate content of each molding tray is cooled and allowed to dry, and after a few minutes, the trays are flipped and the shaped Cadbury chocolates fall out. Now that the production process is complete, all that's left is packaging, which is done mechanically. The machine wraps each chocolate bar with the branded Cadbury wrapper and seals it using heat. About 70 units are arranged in a carton, and about 1 million cartons can fit into the factory's warehouse in Melbourne. These cartons are then transported to stores worldwide to make the delicious chocolates available for you to enjoy. Do you think Cadbury makes the best chocolate? Leave your answer in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.